Belmont Park. It is Perth race number 11 for our Singapore viewers. It's the listed idyllic print stakes. Of course, it's meant to be run on Saturday. We see it here at Belmont Park on Wednesday. We had a couple of runners as well. Yeah, this is a really good race, and I'm glad to see Rebel King in this field. That's the addition. And just with the extra spacing of days, I've changed my market a fair <laughs> bit. This is a bit complex now. Um, I'm no less confused. This is still very difficult, but I, I think I've got the winner, Adam. I don't know about you. Well, the winner last start, uh, when they, well, most of these met was Winkin and Nolan. That was his first listed win. The first listed win for Lucy Warwick as well. Let's take a look at that performance now. Rock Magic comes to her outside. At the 300, Smoko joined by Cool Trade going easily for Carberry. Cool Trade now pop the question. 200 to go and she accelerates. Running on down the outside is Winkin and Nod. Rock Magic, Smoko continues to fight. Cool Trade here comes Wink and a Nod though. Wink and a Nod has pounced on Cool Trade and it was Wink and a Nod with a brilliant... Yeah, it was coming Wink and a Nod. It was luckless in the previous start and that finish was superb on that soft six track. Has drawn a little bit wide here, but I really think Wink and a Nod can maintain those form lines. I just have one ahead of it though. Well, if you've got one ahead of it, I think we might have the same and that might be number six Cool Trade, which mm. has been very unlucky in its yeah. last two runs. Beaten by Rebel King, beaten by Wink and a Nod, but I think it can turn the tables in this race. Yeah, picks up five kilograms on Rebel King for a nose margin. Well, that's more than enough. And last start, that day suited horses from running home and that was Wink and a Nod. Cool Trade was an excellent effort on speed. And I just think it all depends what Chansky does. If Chansky elects to take a sit um, and they allow Smoko to lead, then I think there's a spot for cool trade. And if it gets outside the leader, I think it'll win. Number four, Smoko, ridden by Paul Harvey, has never lost second up before. Last year in this race, finished mm. second behind Barricky as well. What did you take from the first up performance and can it win this race? Yeah, I thought it was good. In the end, it's finished two lengths away from Wink and a Nod and is well weighted here. I think this is one that absolutely benefits from that meeting being cancelled on Saturday. It gets to move to that three-week spacing, and as a horse that's been off from a pretty big let-off, I think it needs every day it can get, and I think it'll really improve. Well, let's take a look at selections then for the listed race of the day. I'm going to be tipping number six, Cool Trade, from number seven, Wink and a Nod. Number eight, Chansky, with a 48 and a half, still throwing question marks for me, and number four, Smoko. I'm six with you, Cool Trade on top from seven, Wink and a Nod, number four, Smoko, and the five, Rebel King. Race number seven at Belmont Park. It is Perth race number 13 for our Singapore viewers. It's over the 1,200 metres, and Ian, an interesting race, a hard one to analyse, some very different form lines when we take a look at it. Yeah, they all have their pros and cons, in my opinion. Um, I found this one of the hardest races of the day, but I'm hoping for one thing to happen to find one of my best bets of the day if it occurs. Uh, but outside of that, I found it very difficult. Well, our last start winner was number two, It's It. It was written by Patrick Carberry that day. He's shown signs of breaking through. It's taken a while. It was a really good win. William Pite's ride this start. Let's take a look at that victory by one and a half lengths now. It's It has taken out wider in the straight, 3.50 to go. Sassanova is just in front. Bollywood Blitz coming through. Now Defiancy nearer the inside. And then came Akasinga. Bella Blitz is coming home okay. And It's It might have them covered on the extreme outside. Sassanova with It's It. It's It races to the front and his home. Draws clear now from Sassanova. Bella Blitz and It's It wins it well from Sassanova. It was just super impressive on that occasion. It's It. It was caught three wide without cover and eventually got the job done and did it quite comfortably. It really didn't beat much on that occasion. The previous start behind Tented and well, the form lines from that really haven't come through. Uh, but William Pike takes the ride but it's all about the jockey that he's replaced. Pat Carberry, he has gone with Stefan's Dom. I've looked closely at its form line and I think it is head and shoulders above the rest of these. Well, tell us why we should back it then. I think if it gets over and crosses and leads this field uninterrupted, I think it'll be very hard to beat. The form line through Wobbegong and the defeat in hindsight, sorry, the victory over Al Maleo in hindsight looks very impressive. Bit of a concern over the weight, but I just think it is the class galloper. What about number five, Van Demonian? The Winkers go on here with second last start behind Sebring Lane. Aaron Mitchell rides at just the 56 kilos. He's going to need some luck in running from the barrier, but if it gets it, I think it can be very hard to beat. Yeah, I, that's my biggest threat. I thought it was a great performance behind Sebring Lane. It was in good time. Uh, and they beat third by a, l a long margin, but it was all about the barrier. If they attempt to go forward, that might be a positive, but it could get caught three wide. If it goes back, I think it'll give too much ground to Steppens, Dom. Well, let's take a look at selections then. I'm going to be tipping number five, Vandemonian. From number two, it's it. Number seven, Steppens, Dom, and number three, Mega Factory. Number seven, Steppens, Dom from three, Mega Factory. Number one, Con Job. And number five, Vandemonian. Race number eight, it is Perth. Race number 14 for our Singapore viewers. It's a Perth Racing membership handicap. 
over the 2100 metres. And Ian, we say it so many times for box seat, these distance races, throw up a few curveballs. And the form lines for this, I think we may see one of those curveballs come at us. Yeah, this is just a meat raffle, this horse. I don't know what is going on. There's so many form lines, but I think there's a great opportunity for value here because there's a lot of horses that have surprised at big odds in the past. And I'll get to those in a second. But we can look at the performance of the eight so extreme last start. Really good. This is a stayer on the rise and William Pike would take the ride. We're going to have a look at that replay now. This is a corner. Tunisia's had a hard run but hit the front. Quickly joined by so extreme though. Princess Jasmine's trying to come through. Not a way to go. Is still there on the inside. Born brilliant and free later. Is starting to come into it as well. But it's so extreme. Tunisia with born brilliant and free later. And then Princess Jasmine the inside. So extreme though. Burst clear from free later. Tunisia and a BB's late on the scene. But it's all so extreme. And so extreme comes away to win it well. A BB got up for... Yeah, really good performance there from so extreme as mm. you mentioned. The start before I had to deal from barrier 13, went forward and only just lost at that race as well. William Pike to go back on board. So I think now he's got a really good understanding of this horse. It's fit enough and it is a true stayer. Yeah, that's where we have to analyse this galloper now is we certainly know it can run this distance out well. It's been attacking the line strongly. But where do those form lines sit? Um, it's always a challenge and it certainly uh, makes me scratch my head. Number two, Nunca Torindes. We just know about this horse. It does make mm. it a bit easier. Yeah. Honest type, always going to put in. And with a three kilo claim, just carrying the 56, should be pretty hard to beat. Yeah, it was three wide without cover last start. That performance prior to that behind our mate Al was very good. That race produced Holy Sky, which won at its next start. So I think Nunca Torindes... I think well, this will be hard to beat. Well, it's uh, probably the logical selection. When you throw out a, a bit of value in this race, and there certainly is going to be some, I thought number 12, Hito, could be one that could certainly surprise a few. Mm. Uh, gone from the 1,000 to the 14 to the 16, has attacked the line in all of those, now gets to the distance uh, where it does its best work over the 2,100 metres. Yeah, completely second those comments there. This is where it, this is its home territory over these type of distances. Last start, it was very good behind Street Bandit. There were some good horses alongside it and will appreciate this rise. Well, let's take a look at selections then. I'm going to be tipping number eight, So Extreme. From number five, Abeb, number two, Nuka Torindes, and number three, Spondula. Well, if I get this quartet, I can move to Barbados with two, Nunsa Torindes, 15, Mood Ride, number 10, Successful Spin, and number 12, Hito. Race number nine at Belmont Park is Perth. Race number 15 for our Singapore viewers. It's over the 1,650 metres, and I thought a really nice way to finish it. Ahmed, a very good winner first up, an unbridled spirit, a nice winner two starts ago. Galaxy Sun has been there and about, and then we know Top of the Wazza and these types could certainly win this race. Yeah, I've got an interesting stat for you about the seven Top of the Wazza, but we'll get to that in a moment. Uh, the one unbridled spirit, it went to a Saturday last start, was, I guess, just too far back and running, but its previous win was solid. It really was, and you were pretty keen on it that day. Mm. It was able to salute, so let's take a look at that victory now. On the bend, trailed in turn by Mistia Shadow. Baby Baby's well back. 300 left to run, though. Boy Burns in front of Strike Drone. Over on the inside, Wander Unbridled Spirit. Crimson Ruler keeps coming down the outside, though, with 150 left to run. Boy Burns in front. Now Wanderer's getting busy. Unbridled Spirit picking it up near the inside. Boy Burns. Unbridled Spirit goes to it. Unbridled Spirit reaches the lead from Boy Burns and wins the last. Yeah, good performance on that occasion. Great. It's a classic Jake Casey ride, isn't it? Taking the inside passage, getting the job done. He's back on board. So whether he's the difference here it remains to be seen, but Unbridled Spirit shouldn't be too far away. I've been pretty impressed with number five, Jaspara, so far. Keith Mifflin, Glenn Smith finally gets a, a nice gate, and I thought we'd just be able to sit just behind the speed and certainly attack the line strongly. It's super close, Jaspara. Um, this is its peak run up to the 1,650 metres here. Good barrier. Glenn Smith stays on board. It won't be too far away. Tell me about your top of the was a stat. Last time the Blinkers went on, it won. It's only had one victory from 21 starts. The Blinkers have been on once and it won on that occasion. They're coming on again here. So, well, statistics will say it's 100% of probability yeah. winning this race. <laughs> Should be get very hard to beat there now with those stats. The one that I'm interested in, uh, number two, Ahmed, a really good win last start. It was the first win first up. The second up record isn't great either. Lucy Warwick rode that mm. day. She rides La Schilla for this race for Fred Kersley, a horse that we know have a lot of speed, has a nice uh, turning rate as well, can yeah. just get out the front and stride freely. What's your thoughts on both those two runners? Yeah, interesting. First up for the 1650 metres for La Schilla, but from a wide barrier, if it gets over onto the speed, Schiller's, I think, form over this distance is probably trumping most of the opposition here. Let's take a look at selections then for the final race of the day. I'm going to be tipping number two, Ahmed, from number five, Jaspara, number seven, Top of the Wazza with those blinkers going on, and number three, Galaxy Sun. 
I'm four Le Schiller on top from three Galaxy Sun, number seven Topper de Waza, and the five Jaspara. Well, that brings us to the end of another edition of Box Seat. So it is time to take a look at our best bets. I'm going to be tipping race three, number eight, Joyful Hope, and race five, number seven, Nancy G. And I'm race two, number seven, Campanda, and race seven, number seven, Stephens Dom. Hopefully we found you a couple of winners throughout this card. Best of luck at Belmont Park on Wednesday, and we'll be back on Saturday with another edition of Box Seat.